Well, I finally did it. I sold some music gear. And you know what that means? It's time to exploit that for content. What's up and welcome back to Gabe Miller Music. I often cover music production gadgets and try to keep a good mix of them going. And so I've accumulated a lot of stuff, some of which I just don't really find myself using unless I really go out of my way to use it. I wanna be very clear here. I'm gonna talk about some stuff that I sold and why, but this is not like an indictment of the gear. It's all good stuff, I just had too much of it. I get stressed out by clutter quite easily and having too many choices makes the process of making stuff less fun. And so it was time to get rid of some stuff and I've like talked about gear acquisition syndrome and minimalism, so it was finally time to put my money where my mouth is. My kind of rule of thumb is that when that cube organizer behind me starts to fill up, it's time to get rid of some stuff. And there were several obvious candidates. And at the very end, I'm also going to talk about some stuff that I would never sell, or at least the kind of stuff where if I had to get rid of almost everything, I would keep. All that being said, let's get into the stuff that I did already sell, starting with the Digitact. Lots of people absolutely swear by the Digitact as like a central brain for a setup or as a drum machine or what have you. I totally understand why. I did use it quite a bit in preparation for reviewing it. I stand by everything I said while reviewing it. I definitely get the appeal. It's genuinely very good. And I try to be objective about stuff, even if like it doesn't necessarily stick for me personally. I try to be objective about something's strengths and weaknesses. So for a gadget that I love, I will still try to be very upfront about its flaws. And for a gadget that I just kind of bounce off of, I try to still see what other people see in it. And that's definitely the case for the Digitact, where I was like, I get it. I enjoyed using it. I made some stuff that sounds cool. I didn't really make a full track with it, but I enjoyed it while I had it, and then once I reviewed it, I just didn't really find myself using it that much. I've got too many Monophonic samplers already. I've got the Dirty Wave Mate, the Polyan Tracker, and the Novation Circuit Rhythm. And those were all fighting it out with each other and the Digitact for my attention. And uh, I usually just found myself using the MPC, which is not mono or monophonic. And if I was going to use a monophonic or mono device, I would want something more portable, something like the Circuit Rhythm or the Mate, both of which I find myself just naturally reaching for a lot more often. Granted, the Digitact is much more powerful than something like the Circuit Rhythm, but I like the Circuit Rhythm's workflow and portability better. And of course, the portability of the Mate is pretty insane, plus it has built-in synth engines, and so there was just a lot of redundancy in what I had, and the Digitact was the obvious thing to go because I just didn't find myself using it, and there was other stuff I liked using more. There's also quite a bit of overlap between it and the Polyand Tracker, which to be completely frank, I don't really find myself using that often either. I almost feel like I may have been kind of using it wrong. Like I should use the Polyan Tracker more as like a chaos generation machine with like the fill function and probability and whatnot, rather than as like a 90s Digitact. I might come back to that at some point. Uh, the Tracker is something that I would consider selling, but it was sent to me by Zounds. Once again, thank you so much to Zounds for being a friend of the channel. So I don't know what like the ethics of selling gear that was sent to me are. It wasn't sent to me by Polyand. I don't have any connection with them, although they've commented on my stuff before. Regardless, there's a lot of duplicated functionality between the Tracker and the Digitact as well, even though the workflows are very different. And so once again, the Digitact was the thing that I bought with my own money. And it was just like a nice clear cut case of yeah, this one's got to go. Plus, along came the Syntact, which I impulse bought because I really wanted to try it and really wanted to cover it on the channel. I now have dug into it a good bit and done some dedicated videos on it and enjoyed it quite a bit. I'm still like trying to figure out exactly how it fits into my setup, but it gave me a lot of what I liked about the Digitact, but with more of like the reason I used the Digitact. I really liked using the Digitact as a way to like turn samples into synths. I like the way the screen interacts with the physical knobs, and I like the sound shaping parameters offered. Like they're pretty simple, but they often can transform a sample into a more synthy element, which I really enjoyed using it for. The Syntact has all of that, but actual synthesis engines and a pretty good variety of them. And like the worst part of the Digitact is loading sounds onto it. So if I could just skip that and make sounds completely from scratch, like that's exactly what I want. And so having the Syntact was the final nail in the Digitact's coffin for me.
speaking of the Syntax making my other devices have duplicated functionality, the model cycles. I've held on to this thing for quite a while. I actually considered selling it like a year ago and decided to hold on to it because I liked having uh, like a physical drum design machine and I ended up like making a full song with it and making some other stuff with it. And so it was like, okay, let's let's hold on to this. It's still obviously got some pull for me. And then once again, I got the Syntax and there's a lot of duplicated functionality where the Syntax does pretty much everything the Cycles does, but then adds filters and envelopes, two LFOs per track, a bunch of extra synth engines, overdrive in addition to cumulative distortion, like it plus the Digitact style workflow. Yeah, the Cycles kind of just became the diet syntax, which is not a bad thing. I still recommend it for people who want a diet syntax and the functionality and kind of form factor that that offers. It's a lot more portable, for instance. And that video that I did recently, what makes the cycles unique in 2022 was kind of meant to be like my final thoughts on the cycles before I got rid of it, because I still absolutely think there's a place for it. But once again, since I'm lucky enough to be able to afford a syntax, it was time to just get the duplicated functionality out. Absolutely nothing against the device, but it does have a really narrow and specific sound. And uh, I definitely didn't find myself using it as much as I thought I would as a, like a groove box. I found myself using it a lot as basically a drum and sound design machine. But even then, once I designed like a bunch of sounds that I really liked and found myself using all the time, which by the way, a bunch of those are in my $5 sample pack, link in the description. Once I got those sounds and like harvested them, I found myself using the cycles a lot less. And then the Syntact came along and was the final nail in the Cycles' coffin as well. So that device is just killing stuff here. I don't hate Electron. I think people think I hate Electron because like, I tend to not use their stuff as much. And obviously now I'm selling two electron gadgets and putting them in the thumbnail. I really don't. I just found my own personal ideal electron device and decided to uh, trim the fat, if you will. Up next is the second groove box I ever bought the OP-1, the original one. I got it like way back before there were price gouging controversies or of course long before the introduction of the OP-1 field. And since then, online conversation about it has just gotten kind of weird. And so I'm like less inclined to put it in the videos. And also here's the main thing. I just didn't find myself using it as much as I thought I would. Its sound is fairly specific and a little bit odd and a little bit both digital, but kind of like lo-fi and kind of fuzzy. That can sound really nice and you can actually get something that sounds really cool like if you work within what it's good at. And I definitely did. I've written some of my favorite stuff I've ever written on that thing. And I even took it traveling overseas with me like it's been around the world and back. And so I have like a lot of nostalgia attached to that thing and I've made some music I'm really proud of with it. But with all of that, I still just didn't find myself using it all that often. And I had to go out of my way to use it. And so eventually I just went ahead and designed some sounds on it, kind of harvested them for my own use and said, I think it's just time to like let that one go. There are other devices I prefer to use for traveling now, especially the MC-101 and Dirty Wave Mate and to a degree the circuits. The original OP-1 also had the kind of limitation that you can basically record one song on it. Like it has the tape machine gimmick, which I do really like and I think is cool, but it means that if you record like a song's worth of stuff into it, you either have to just kind of record stuff after it or eventually offload that stuff and it made it less flexible to work with. And anytime there's extra friction associated with working with a gadget, I tend to find myself using it less and the inability to like save individual songs and then just recall them as I go became a bit of a bummer and a bit of a deal breaker for it as a travel gadget after I got stuff that's better suited for what I want out of a workflow. And also, of course, the tape machine thing means that if you like overdub stuff, that stuff is just kind of like baked in. Whereas with a more sequencer based device like the MC-101, you can go back and change stuff, swap sounds out, uh, edit stuff, layer things kind of however you want and be a lot more flexible with it. And so it just 
eventually made sense to say, you know what, I think it's time to let the OP-1 go. It absolutely served its purpose. I think there was a point where it was overrated, and then I think now it swung back to where so many people just hate on it for no reason that I think it's now underrated. Uh, and uh, I really don't care to insert myself into the middle of that debate because like at the end of the day, who cares? But it was time to let this one go. It brought me a lot of joy when I had it. Absolutely no regrets getting it, but it was time to move on. And those are the main three that I've sold so far that were like a pretty easy decision when I really like took a step back and was objective about my setup. I want to be very clear here. I still have too much stuff like objectively it is too much and I don't use all of it all that often and I could very easily get rid of the majority of it and still have everything I need to not only make music but like have fun making music because of course all any of us really need to make music are a computer and probably some sort of MIDI controller to get like a bit more of a hands-on songwriting experience and that's it. That is all that is actually needed. Everything else on that shelf is a bonus and is there because it's fun. And even then, if I was to get rid of most of my stuff, I would still have plenty to have a whole lot of fun in a very hands-on workflow, either for composition, beat making, live performance, or like YouTube top-down camera type jamming. So let's talk about what I would keep if I had to sell almost everything. First of all, the Novation Circuit Tracks. The original Novation Circuit, of course, was a huge deal for me. The Circuit Tracks is just the continuation of that, but better. And it would both give a really great setup for live performance, and it's quite portable. So that's a very easy yes, I would hang on to that thing pretty much over everything else. The other one, if I can only keep two gadgets, would be the MPC-1. It is my primary music production platform at this point. If I want to do anything that's like mildly complicated or sample-based, I reach for the MPC-1 by default. Now, I did a video talking about my complicated feelings on it because uh, it feels a little bit like it's an unstable foundation because Akai keeps kind of breaking it or moving in weird directions that make me like a little bit nervous. But as of right now, I would still hold on to that thing over pretty much everything. And uh, those are the two that if I only had those gadgets, it would still be like more than enough. In addition to that, though, I probably would hold on to the circuit rhythm as like a casual beat making device. I also did a video recently about how that fits into my normal music production setup and the fact that it's kind of my go to casual, just mild, fun music making device. Most of that music doesn't even make it to YouTube. I just like to tinker with it. And beyond that, I would keep a couple of hardware synths, probably the Micro Freak and the Mini Log. I would also consider selling both to get the Mini Freak because to me, that seems like the synth of the future, literally. Like that seems like uh, a very forward thinking gadget that brings what I would like to see in a synth into the world. However, it is more expensive and I like to try to like promote budget stuff occasionally. And as of right now, it lacks wavetable support, which I think is just a really stupid oversight. And so for now, I will happily hang on to like my uh, analog polyphonic synth, the mini log, the original, and my kind of wild card synth, the micro freak. Those two cover really all my bases and give me pretty much everything I need for a synth experience, especially since I would end up jamming with two synths maximum on the circuit or probably multi sampling those into the MPC. There is so much flexibility within just that little list. And then for one additional device, it would probably be the MC 101. It just got even better. And in fact, that would be allowed to fight it out for my attention with the mini log because you can get a lot of those kind of sounds on the 101. And of course, it's much more compact and portable. And a very good argument could be made for an MC 101 circuit tracks combo being like literally all you need. And then anything else is just a bonus. So that's the still kind of large collection, but those are the essentials. In order, the circuit tracks, MPC 1, MC 101, circuit rhythm, micro freak, mini log. That's it. That's all I actually like really need or want. Anything on top is just 
fun. Like the hologram microcosm, fun. It doesn't really fit into my normal music production workflow, and it's like unlocked parts of my musicality that I wouldn't have unlocked otherwise, but I don't consider it essential. Dirty Wave Mate, really cool gadget, and I do genuinely really like it. Uh, I would still probably reach for a slightly more hands-on feeling device for travel stuff. Roland JU06A. The MC-101 gives me at least kind of the bare essentials for like replicating that general vibe. And so while it's fun to have, and I've really enjoyed using it for jams and for multi-sampling, that one I bought purely because it's fun. I didn't even like really intend to review it. I mostly just got it for me because I thought it would be cool to have like the shrunken version of a really classic synth that I love the sound of. Hopefully you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see some of those other videos that I mentioned, you can click or tap over here somewhere, and I'll be back with a new video in a little bit. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching.